bad news, guys. Bad news indeed. It's well, it's not even all but confirmed, but it's confirmed. Rashad Lee Bazor is going to be leaving Ajax to join Wolfsburg in the January window, and that puts me in a pickle. Because if you remember from the last episode, if you haven't done that, go ahead and check that out. Leave a like on this video to help out with my postpartum depression right here. <laughs> That the big bad was always son is gonna be leaving us, but uh, yeah, he's going to Wolfsburg in the winter time, and that puts me in a pickle because the reason why he's leaving, or at least the best that I can surmise, is that he wasn't getting a lot of play time with the current coach. But under me, under Kari Mugi, he's been getting plenty of play time and been doing extremely well. So, what I said in the last episode was, if a team comes in and they offer me, you know, something good, I will sell him. But this is before the news that he's officially transferred out. So, what I'm going to do now, this is going to be in the past since I'm bulk recording this. i got to bulk record a couple of these, I do apologize, but uh, I'm going up for the holidays. So, to get you guys videos out, be expecting that, you know, a couple of holiday videos. I will be bringing my rig back as well to try to keep on making videos for you guys, so I hope you all appreciate that. So smoosh your hard nipples on that like button. But alas, back to the big bad bazaar. I'm going to put up a Twitter poll, and it's going to be in the past, and then whatever, you know, it comes out on the Twitter poll, I will either end up selling him, or keeping him and I was I was back and forth man I put him on the transfer list I put him off the transfer list I put him back on the transfer list I was playing with my emotions I was playing with my emotions but this is something in inevitable you know it's gonna it was inevitable because that's kind of how IX goes they're great at producing young talent and then you know other teams other big European teams come and post them in and we have to be ready man we have to be ready to replace you know, these fine talents with, you know, new talents, with, you know, with the Academy, with the Date Comps. And we are in the perfect time to do it because we're in the January window. Now, we've been producing some good youngsters, and I will show you a couple of them later in this episode. But, you know, we, we don't have too many funds. We don't have too many funds. But if we did end up selling the Big Bad Vazor, son, we can actually bring in a couple of replacements. So I was, you know, I was flirting around, you know, like after you break up with your girlfriend, you go on Twitter. You go on, you know, Instagram, you go on, you, you know, you go on the swipe apps and all that stuff. And I was, I was on there. I was, you know, swiping left, swiping right, you know, checking out a few guys and, um, well, guys, but hey, man, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> you know, I was just checking out a couple of good young center mids and I was like, mm, you know, Bazaar's pretty hot, but these new chicks are like kind of banging, kind of banging right here. And we continue on with business as usual. You can't let... You know, the transfer drama really, like, holds you down. We go up, we train up our boys right here. And there was something a little bit interesting right here. Because we do train up... Remember, note right here, Isak is going to be in that lineup. 69 overall, growing up very nicely. And we do sit comfortably atop of the league. Losing Bazaar would be a magnificent, horrendous blow to our team. Because it is our midfield that really drives, you know, our formation forward. We struggle at times when we have a weaker midfield. And to have... The powerful force of, of Klassen, uh, Bazor, and Dendonker in there really is the catalyst and the, you know, the, the platform in which we can rock the 3-4-3 so effectively in the Eredivisie. Um, unfortunately, if we do move on, we do have the options of going in, taking a look at our Youth Academy, as you can see, at the Day 2 comps. So we got a lot of good youngsters in here. CDM, you know, maybe flirt with that. We, we have a bunch of Japanese. I think in about three more months, they're going to be going ahead and wrapping that up with center forward, left mid, and of course, at the very bottom, you're going to see him very quickly. Look at the potential of this mother trucker right here. Eduardo Rossi, 91 to 94. 91 to 94. He is... We got him. We just got him. We got the next Neymar. He's in our academy. We scattered out. And makes sense because... Um, as I've been reading up about Ajax, apparently their new scouting director specializes in South America. So, there you guys go. I will be scouting more in South America when our scouts do come back. As well as, you know, still be scouting in the Netherlands and a little bit of Europe. You know, Japan was, was cool. We'll, we'll take that, but we'll probably be moving on from Belgium and Japan in the next one. We're going to go ahead, auto-adjust, sign, you know, a knight of their bright youngster from Belgium. Belgium, you know, possibly having a golden generation if they could actually get their act together in international play. And uh, we're going into the transfer window. Andre Onana, nope, we're going to reject all offers. We like him too much. Now, for possible replacements that we could find in the transfer market, I wanted to keep it, you know, within the realm of real, you know, realistic. Ajax doesn't splash the cash all too much. Like, the biggest one that I've seen recently is Hakim Ziyech for 20. So I was looking at Jefferson Lamar. 
or Lerma over there, Alfred Duncan. And Lerma I like because he's actually like uh, Colombian, which is, you know, that's where we sound like Sanchez and Cassiera uh, from. Alfred Duncan, I believe, is Ghanaian. You know, he's African. But look at these stats. I was just basically looking at people that kind of have a similar stat layout and are under 10 million. So my last one, and probably my favorite one, is Brian Dabo. And you know if he were to score a goal, we could just give him the dab. His last name has dab in it. It would be incredible. So he's probably my front runner. And a lot of you guys were suggesting in the previous episode, hey man, January transfer window, you gotta sign some of those hot, you know, pre-contracts and get those guys for free. Unfortunately, we dead as broke. <laughs> All right, not a penny to it. Well, a couple pennies. We only have 27 in the wages. <laughs> Barely even to sign a, you know, a signing bonus at all so we can't approach a lot of these big you know names i was thinking you know uh you know ntap maybe witzel uh you know all these guys i was looking primarily i'm trying to keep it you know with the same feel of ix so i'm looking at like nordic you know people of nordic descent you know of danish descent of swedish descent zlatan was a lot of you guys were asking about it but with the wages at 185 even if we were to sell bazaar and put it all into our in our wage budget we couldn't afford them so I think he's pretty much out of the, you know, out of the conversation. Then this sneaky thing happened. I go back and do some training, and Isak isn't there anymore. So we're gonna pop in Mbappe Latin uh, in for this one. And I have to go figure out this mystery. We're dealing with so much transfer drama in this episode. Call up Kingstar right here. And I looked him up, and this is what happened. I completely forgot he's a recent transfer in real life. So the only way we could have gotten him over was to get him in on loan. So that's what happened. We've got him in on a short loan. He went back to his team at the January transfer window, and now we have the opportunity to buy him. Now, you might be like saying, hey, Mr. Mr. Bimonis, you don't have any money. How are you going to do this? Well, uh, Serrero is on his way out in real life, apparently. He's worth around $3 million. You know, Isak is worth around $2.5 million. I will gladly go ahead give up a surplus player to bring in a player that has been an absolute sensation since arriving here now Wolfsburg getting greedy coming in for Hakim Ziyech and I actually put him on loan you might be asking why you're doing this I'm doing the potential I'm doing the potential upgrade right here so he was at 25 when we first sent him out now he's at 25 and a half when we recalled him from loan so that bumps just just a little bit just a little bit his potential a little bit higher than his uh, regular 85 and there we go AIK accepting the offer for the Brazilian Serrero for Alexander Isak the next Zlatan Ibrahimovic he's been on a tear for us and I totally forgot that he was on loan and I remember my original theory was just to have him there for spot starts and not really train him up not really play him all too much so he didn't get too expensive luckily he didn't go all the way too high you know in his overall I think he starts out at like 68 67 but he was just so tremendous, I forgot not to start him. He kept on scoring goal after goal after goal, and now he is permanently a member of IX Football Club. And I am freaking ecstatic because there's something special about him, man. There's just something about him that he outplays his stats. He's he's quickly becoming one of my favorite, you know, strikers that I've used in career mode, and that's crazy considering, you know, in Manchester United. I was using the likes of like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Martial, Rashford, Antoine Griezmann for God's sake, and Isak just gets the job done and rightfully finding his place back in the training session. Gotta get his finishing's only 72, but he I, he feels like a better finisher than Griezmann at times. Of course, we're you know to get a little bit of funds to maybe you know, sign a pre-contract or two. We're gonna be moving on from a couple of surplus players that we never use. Zifuk. You know, he's getting out there. Westerman, I know a lot of you IX fans are like, I don't even know why we bought him in the first place. Get rid of him. And we do have a couple of matches. We're going to play two matches. One up against Otto Den Haag. Haag? Haag? I mean, something like that. I know it's the phlegm thing. Otto Den Haag. Otto Den Haag. Yeah? Getting a little bit better with the Dutch pronunciation right there. Uh, Heiko Westerman. I don't know, a lot of you guys are like, we don't know why we bought him in the first place, he's pretty awful. So, we're trying to get rid of him. That can get us about a cool million, and then we'll kind of flirt back, around back, 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 and see what we can do. Alright, we're getting into this up against Otto Den Haag. Uh, usual suspects in here, except Otto Milton, I think, was interesting. A little bit more productive on the right wing than uh, Bertrand Traore, so we're going to go ahead and play him. We're going to keep Big Bad Bazaar in the lineup for now, because I'm unsure whether I want to get rid of him or not. 
Sanchez uh, leading the pack over here. Onana, Tete, and Riddlewald uh, solidifying the back line. The big bad Dodonka, Klassen, and Ziak also in the midfield. And as you can see on the bench, Isak, the next Ibrahimovic, perhaps. Let's go ahead and let's get it. We were able to defeat uh, Otto Den in our first match. They sit in 16th place. Not the strongest side. And with our first teamers out there, it's a little bit of a congested window right here. So we're going to start our first teamers in this one. And then we're going to start our second teamers in the second match. And then uh, you'll see in the next episode, we'll go with the first teamers. Once again, I believe we're playing uh, Utrecht, or Utrecht in the next, uh, in the following episodes. So there you guys go. Otto Den coming at me strong with a 4-3-3. This should be good times for us because that is how we are set up playing at famous Amsterdam Arena. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. But in the first half, there was only one player from Ajax that was doing well. And you can hear by the theme already. It was, what is his name? What is thy name? On that Lovely stuff. Point by range. Diabolical defending on my part. Lovely take on the half volley and a firing stinging shot parried away by the Rihanna lover himself. And this is what I gotta show more. Sanchez is such a rock in the back, but I just don't show enough defensive movements. Now, onto the ball. The Jamaican, Leon Bailey. Can he go ahead, get himself some dirtiness? Went for the finesse shot, but last second ditch defending. Otto Den was all freaking over us, man. Tete, unlucky bounce right there. Great last ditch. <laughs> Throwing our bodies into the mix. Once again, good takedown over there. Good little scoop turn. And Onana, ever present, ever wary. You will not get past the Rihanna lover that easily. And the first half absolutely dominated by Otto Den. But in the second half, we are a second half team, man. We all about... We all about that second half now. Adam Wilson floating it over to the middle. Great last ditch clear off of the line. And well, practically off the line. Ben Bazor. Look at this. Good patient play, man. Total football. The Tiki Taka was on fleek, as the young kids will say in this. Now Adam Wilson going it over. Good hold up play from Dolberg. Good strength to get it away from the defender. One more time. Big shot to the inside. For his 11th goal of the season, we earned the trophy. Where is the ball on PS4? And I looked it up. This trophy is where you have to pass the ball 11 times in the final third and then end it off with a goal. Possession football at maximum capacity. Look at that in a delightful finish. Doing a little bit of a like, eh, maybe a Cruyff-esque turn. And then Dolberg linking up with Klaassen. Lovely no-touch dribble to the outside. Getting it into his preferred foot and a classy. Classy finish from Mikel Capitan David Klassen. His episode was the last one. He was like, I didn't shot enough in the last one. Give me this one. Give me one back. Lovely stuff. Tenacious ferocity in that right foot of his. And a laser beam just gets a little bit of a deflection as it goes into the top net. And lovely, lovely stuff. The Amsterdam Arena is a light with trepidation as we hold a 2-0 lead. It was a little bit edgy, man. It was definitely a little bit edgy in the first half, but then we were just a second half team. And then Isaac going ahead, showing us what he can do. Okay, so maybe I a little bit overhyped him that he's becoming my favorite, you know, striker ever. A little bit too prematurely. Well, you know, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I just hope that like, oh, him going back to his club and him bringing back in help make some loses for him because he is in probably the best goal scoring form on our team right now didn't really show it all that but alas a great win dominating win a win that you expect from a team like Ajax up against a team like Otto Den uh Klaassen getting a 9.2 I believe he got an assist and a goal there we go Dolberg getting the other goal and the assist no he didn't get another goal the assist came from Adam Wilson and Dolberg son Absolute domination in possession, 65, one of the higher ones that I've ever reached. And uh, there we go. We keep on moving on. Zfuck has been sold off for a cool half million. We're trading up the bucks. Onana getting up to a 78. But here's a little bit of, if I had known this, I would have never, you know, loaned out um, uh, Ziek Because now, Ziek was on top of both the assists and... You know, the he was on top of both the assists and in the goals. I think he had like 10 goals and like 6 assists. And now, if you recall them, if you loan them out and you recall them, it totally resets their stats for the year. So, I'm going to do like an artificial one underneath the names and kind of like take tabs up. So, for all you guys in the, you know, in the comments, remember, Zek is still on, I believe, 10 goals and 6 assists. And then this freaking happened!
I spent a lot of time considering my future, and although the timing is bad, I know I need to change the scenery. I'd like to move immediately! No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 What in the flying fuck, EA? You could just, you, you EA'd me enough. You double-fisted me enough with this fucking game and the fucking patches and the fucking, oh my God, $60. You said you were gonna improve. You said you were gonna improve career mode. Oh, so much. The only thing that you've added this year, realistically, is this bullshit where they they always now they automatically want to get sold, and there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing except this little trick. You put them out on loan, and thankfully Atletico Madrid to the rescue comes in. You get them on. You get you you loan the player out immediately. This doesn't always work, but it's it's your only prayer. It's the only workaround because there's no way in hell Klassen, who's basically raised down the street from Ajax, who's been at Ajax his whole entire life, would be like, I'm captain now, but I, I'd like to move across. And there we go. We recall him from loan and hallelujah, we get it back, baby. Look at that. Thank you to the sub who recommended this to me. But that is the only way. So if you ever get that message of like, I'm not going to accept the contract. I want to be sold. Put them out on loan and pray, pray to the gods of FIFA that you actually, you know, somebody comes in for that loan, you loan them out, you recall them, and then you're through. Unfortunately, once again, for the second player that we recalled in this episode, his stats will be reset. So remember <laughs> his goal total from that previous thing and his assist total. I think he was the top of the league too, or near the top of the league for that. All right. We are into our second game up against Sparta Rot Rotterdam. And we are starting one of our youth scouts. Uh, youth scouted players, Broin over here is going to be in 60 overall. Pretty lovely. And a lot of the first teamers, you know, a lot of the other first teamers. Sparta is essentially like the whole city of the era divisi. Basically, they kind of flirt with relegation and coming back in every single other year. So that's kind of the best way to set up. Once again, playing the 4-3-3. We are playing a 4-3. No, a 3-4-3. And there you can see Gamedas, Nori, a lot of the, you know, younger aspects, and of course the monster himself, Isak, Shona, who I apologize guys, I realize that Shona is not German, I don't know why I blanked on that, he is of Danish descent. Now Isak, going ahead, getting flipped around, getting tripped up, which will earn us a free kick. Shona from distance, and the Danish international goes ahead and pushes it wide. He's been also a little bit chirping up in the, you know, in the message section saying, you know, we're unsure if I want to stay here and that kind of stuff. So we'll see if we get any more production out of him. Vanderbeek, as long as they're, you know, an IX player, I'm still going to play them. I'm still going to give them play time. I'm not going to be that type of shady manager. Shona getting another chance from the exact same spot. Uh, this time actually pushing it into the wall. But that was weird, man. I did the exact same thing. You know, three bars of power for both of them and just completely different results. Free kicks are kind of weird this year. That's all I'm going to say. And now Veltman going ahead. I just want to show a little bit more defensive. Give a little bit more appreciation for the, you know, defensive efforts of our youngsters now. Now Mbappe Latin getting in. Beautiful vision to Shona firing it across. Low, driven finish from the Danesman himself. Is that the proper way to, if you're, if you're Danish, do you say a Danesman? I'm not that, I'm American. I apologize. I'm not too well versed in the European terminology of a person. I apologize once again if I put it that. But I won't apologize for that finish. The number 20, putting the laces through. And the rain helping that slick ball just absolutely skittle into the back of the net. Scintillating stuff. You know, patient stuff and good all-around work from the Ajax. Man, we go up 1-0 from relegation fodder. You know, right there. But then, Svilar getting his rare start. At least you can put a little bit of effort into it once again. Here, however, getting onto this to Veltman. Veltman onto the outside, linking up with Bertrand Triori, trying to prove his spot. Beautiful over the top ball. Not the fastest fool, but Isak using his strength. This is why I love him. His tenacity. Then ball rolling to the inside. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He cannot stop scoring. He cannot stop scoring. Oh my god. I'm so happy, Dad. Oh, I'm so happy. I don't know what it is about him, man. He's not that fast. He's got like 77 pace. He's not even that strong. He's not even that good of a dribbler. He's a three-star skiller. But look at that, man. It's just, this is why you play career mode, and this is why you give a chance to the younger players or players that you would never usually use. This is why you don't go chalk. 
is you can see players just surprise you man they play above their stats they play above what they are on paper and that's what's beautiful not about career mode just but about sports you know the underdog story you know that's like Lionel Messi's story of just you know people thought he was too small he wasn't fast enough he wasn't strong enough and he didn't fit the measurables of what you would see on paper but you give him the chance you give him the chance they can keep on going Nori linking up over here what does he do flip it in can we get a double with effect no but it falls to Dominus 3-0, 70th minute, put a fork in him, put a fork in the potato that is Sparta, Rotterdam, because they are done, you might as well just, they're so done, you could just like mush them up, make mashed potatoes with them, add a little bit of garlic, put a little chives, you know, butter, you know, salt it up properly, that's how you make, that's how you make some good mashed potatoes right there, and there we go, the Chilean himself, and I'm liking it, man. All of these lads, these youngsters, these second teamers, proving themselves. That's why you play. That is why you freaking play. Getting his first goal in the air divisie. It's just so, it's, it's Ajax AF. You know what I'm saying? To give the youngsters a shot and then for them to perform, it just makes you feel all warm and cozy in your testicles. And then Brune, our center back, wants to get in on the action. Coming up from his... Coming up from his defensive position, and look at this! Right footed, rifles it, and that's going in, man. If not for the keeper, we could have scored. He could have had the proud, you know, the proud tradition of scoring on his IX debut. Oh, what a day. What a freaking day of drama. We might lose Bazaar. We almost lost freaking Klaus, and that would have been absolute heartbreak. This window would have been devastating, man. It could have been RIP to this freaking crew to lose Klaassen, Shona, and freaking Bazaar in one window. Would have put us back like one or two seasons. But, you know, thankfully, we thank you. The biggest hero in this one is Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid come through. Thank you so much for loading it. For grabbing him on loan and letting us bring him back and you know circumventing that maybe i'll do like a video on that but anyway guys that is it from me oh, if you did enjoy this video if you did enjoy isak he's pushing i'm gonna put a poll up again does he start man does he start because when he does he just does magical things dolberg's son is incredible but isak he just will not let up man he just will not give an inch and that is a fantastic problem to have on this squad and with this team i'm having i don't know man i'll just say it i'm having so much fun just play this career mode it seems i don't know it's just like an emotional emotional connection to the players now now that i know that like learning the backstory of ix learning more about these players has just gotten me like way more involved in this career mode even then you know maybe even the manchester united career mode you know what i'm saying like it's just this is something new it's something bright it's something fresh and i hope that really shows in the gameplay and the commentary that i do if it does let me know in the comments down below leave a like my name is be hope you guys are having a wonderful day remember stay yourself stay humble be weird